Welcome back to the channel guys, hope you've been keeping well. Now I know I'm a little bit late on this, but we are gonna be looking and reviewing the 5800X3D. Now we're gonna be doing this in two parts. The first is we're actually gonna analyze what is the 5800X3D, more the 3D aspect of it. And in the second part, we're gonna look at the performance and what that 3D part actually means. So in order to understand what the 5800X3D is, we need to understand that it is a derivative of the 5800X. Now, in order to best describe this, we're gonna put them side by side. Now, if we look at the 5800X, it is an eight core 16 thread processor. It's core clocks of 3.8 to 4.7. It's got an L1 cache of 512K, an L2 cache of four megabytes, and an L3 cache of 32 megabytes. Now, conversely, the X3D, also an eight core 16 thread processor, but its core clocks are 3.4 to 4.5, on paper making it worse than the 5800X. If we look at the memory cache on L1, it's got 512K. On L2, it has four megabytes, and on L3, it has 32 megabytes. But does it? That's the question. Now, the first thing that we need to note is that the 5800X3D is a pure gaming CPU. That is what it was designed for. But the difference between the CPUs is something called vCache. Now, what is vCache? Vcache is a 3D stacking technology that has multiple applications and has also been seen in the Epic CPUs from AMD. Now this technology was actually really difficult for AMD to do because it had something called Hybrid Bond 3D. Now to put something in front of you to show you which you may not understand, Hybrid Bond 3D is a technology of multiple connection points in chip stacking. But this is all the technicals. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna graphically show you what the difference between the two are. So now that we're in graphic mode, let's look at the 5800X and the 5800X 3D. Okay, there are the two CPUs as you know them. Now, both CPUs underneath look like this. Now, contrary to popular belief, this little guy over here is the actual CPU and that would be reflected round about there and round about there. Now this image over here is true for both of these CPUs. So now we can get rid of the actual CPUs. Now that we're looking at the 5800X and the 5800X3D as theoretically the same thing, this is what it looks like a little bit closer up. Now this guy over here is this in its entirety. Now this has just got a little bit too much going on and we're gonna simplify this. Now without looking at the overly technical drawing, this over here is still the same thing as this over here, which is an example of the 5800X and the 5800X3D. Both of these are Zen 3. Now we need to know what actually makes them different. Let's look at the one on the left as the 5800X and the one on the right as the 5800X3D. Now we can actually get rid of the 5800X because again, they are exactly the same thing. It's just different on the X3D. This is where Vcash comes in. What AMD did was they took 64 more megabytes using Hybrid Bond 3D and layered that on top of the already existing chip. And that looks like this. Now, if we look at this from the side, we have to ask ourselves, how did AMD just add 64 megs of L3 cache? And the answer is simple. If we had to look at the CPU from the side, inside we had the actual CPU. Now, where did they put that extra 64 megs of L3 cache? Well, that through hybrid bond technology, they put that directly on top. But now that little gray area that we look at is the heat shield or the manifold cover. Now they had to do a process called die thinning. And what die thinning does is exactly that in which they thinned out the CPU in order to accommodate for the Vcache. Now what that ended up doing was being able to fit both of those elements underneath the heat shield or manifold. Now, as a result, we have now got 96 megabytes of L3 cache. So what does this mean for us as gamers? Because, I mean, we've got RAM. So what 
effect does this have? So again, this is best illustrated by imagery. If we had a man sitting on the left here and we had another man sitting right below him, their objective is to fetch corn from a pile on the right hand side. So now you can imagine this guy's a CPU fetching information from the CPU. So they are having to make this travel every time. Now, this is the example of the 5800X. Now, what they did in the case of the 5800X3D is they effectively made a smaller pile of corn a lot closer to the CPU that has to fetch it. Now, instead of having to travel all the way through to the RAM to fetch it on that side, he only has to travel this amount of distance. Now, obviously, this is a perfect world because there is still a lot more information that's needed there. But this is random information. But what it means, in effect, is that we have 10 times faster processing and at approximately 8 nanoseconds. And all that AMD is effectively done now is caused for a faster data transfer or more efficient data transfer. Obviously, the nuances of it get a lot more technical, but this is how we are able to appreciate faster frames per second in games with the same CPU architecture as the 5800X. So on to conclusion, personally, I think that AMD's actually been holding onto this technology for a while and it was only going to be introduced in Zen 4. But because of the aggressive move from Intel on 12th generation, it forced their hands to introduce something because we have seen benchmarks where the 5800X3D is actually beating the 12900K in game performance. Now, if this theory is correct, I think we have great things to look forward to when the Zen 4 architecture is released later on in this year. The CPU comes in at 8999 in dollar terms, around about $430. Now, this leaves us with a big decision to make. Do we upgrade now or do we wait for Zen 4? Now, this is something that you can only answer yourselves, but weigh this up. So if you take this, this is still based on a AM4 architecture, which means it's a straight upgrade for your PC. However, Zen 4, it has already been confirmed that it is only going to be DDR5, which means that we're going to have to upgrade both our motherboards as well as our RAM. So at $899, looking at the comparative results, which will come out soon, I encourage you to look at this as a serious decision if you're on something like a third gen maybe a 5600X and you want to see that real boost in the gaming performance. I look forward to seeing you on the next video, which will be the test so that we can actually compare a 5800X with the 5800X3D. Until then, look after yourselves. Cheers, guys. Goodbye.